Good Friday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing. Looking right at our significant fire impacts for today, we have winds uh, both today and tomorrow out of the southwest with low humidity here across uh, parts of western Utah, adjacent Nevada, and extending up into eastern Idaho and western Wyoming as well. That's that uh, olive shade. Um, cooling down later in the weekend, you see this green shade through here. This is where cooler, uh, showery weather will be coming in uh, from the north and spreading uh, south and westward, eastwards, I should say, and that'll also affect these olive areas here. That's eastern Idaho and western Wyoming with cooler, more moist conditions later in the weekend. But before that, we have to contend with the wind both today and into tomorrow across parts of eastern Idaho and down into uh, portions of Utah. It's an active day, lightning-wise. Past 24 hours on the right-hand side, thousands of strikes all across uh, Utah going into eastern Idaho, western Wyoming. On the right-hand side, you can see where the precipitation, the uh, lightning was fairly dry in these uh, lighter shades of gray to blue and where there was wet mixed in here. So probably about a 50-50 mix of both wet and dry strikes. Uh, we'll see how that plays out later today as we uh, warm up with some sunshine. Uh, Great Basin fire activity, new fire starts in the red circles. You can see quite a few all across the map, including uh, some areas down in uh, southwest uh, uh, Utah and into right along the edge of the Arizona Strip. So it's starting to dry out down there. Our more significant fires are further up in the north. And precipitation overall over the past seven days, not including yesterday. You can see how dry we were across the northern half of our area. And uh, that uh, same story uh, goes on for the past 30 days. And of course, uh, the typical wetness we see in our southern regions. Our ERC map, you can see this does not include the moisture that fell late last night. So uh, as that lightning did occur, even though it was uh, moderately wet in some areas, you can see where our ERCs are in the purple across eastern Idaho, uh, northern Utah, even the dark red near the 90th to 96th percentile. The purple shades are 97th percentile and beyond. So with those critically dry fuels near record levels, uh, as we dry out today and into tomorrow, uh, we definitely have a, a good potential of holdovers. On the infrared satellite imagery, we see deep low pressure dropping down out of British Columbia, pulling in moisture that's going to be pushing into Idaho with cloudy skies, cooler temperatures, no real evidence of any monsoonal activity. Uh, there is drier air and also stronger winds with the tightness of, this, uh, of these height contours. That winds will be the main issue as we go into the next uh, 36 hours. So for today, we start seeing a trough of low pressure deepening through here. The tightness of these height lines will increase the southwest wind flow. We have high risk for wind in a large portion of uh, our area, uh, especially the eastern areas. If we look at expected weather conditions, uh, you can see with these winds along with ahead of that front, the orange to purple shades are wind gusts anywhere from uh, 25 to uh, 35 miles per hour, even close to 40. Similar story up here in eastern Idaho, very significant winds. Humidity here, single digits to mid-teens across uh, uh, Nevada and Utah. And looking at the uh, mid-teens to upper teens, still quite dry with those record dry ERCs up in eastern Idaho, a little bit more moist into uh, Wyoming. Now on Saturday, there's some moisture develops uh, along with that front. You can see where our seven-day fire potential is uh, critically dry. Uh, looking at weather conditions as we're looking at Saturday, you can see on the right-hand side the strong winds, the purple shades, 35 to 45 miles per hour, uh, diminishing winds further up north. Uh, and that's where it'll be getting cooler. See the humidity starting to come up a little bit by those yellowish and green shades into the uh, uh, upper teens to upper 20% range, but still bone dry further south. Into Sunday, as that trough deepens, the moisture expands, covering just about all of Idaho and western Wyoming and far northern reaches of Utah and Nevada. You can see how our significant fire potential dryness levels take a big hit from the brown down into the yellow and even into the green up into the central mountains of Idaho. And we take a, a look further down at the expected weather conditions. And look at the humidities on the left-hand side. You see these greens here in Utah. These are humidity levels uh, anywhere from uh, 20 to 40% uh, in a lot of areas through here for dry humidity. So we see these darker shades of green. Uh, there probably will be some showers and definitely overcast skies. Humidity levels significantly drier again further south into the 10 to 20% range. Look at those winds across Utah, those 
purple shades you see here are gusts uh, approaching 50 miles per hour with that front uh, and some of this will be occurring in areas that still have very dry humidity uh, so for the Box Canyon fire, for any activity still ongoing through there, uh, that could be very significant. Also, with the recent lightning in eastern Nevada, winds out of the west-northwest at about uh, 25 to 35 mile an hour gusts. Precipitation for the next three days. This takes us from this morning um, all the way into Monday morning. You can see uh, over one and three quarters of an inch over parts of central um, Idaho, but for the most part this uh, second shade of green through here is a tenth to a quarter of an inch. Uh, so definitely a low-end wetting rain for most areas except in the far north where it could be locally heavier. And then looking down the road as we go into Monday, we're in a trough of low pressure, but we see drier air starting to come on in, but our uh, dryness levels have definitely taken a hit and kind of a reset through here except for far western areas. Then going to Tuesday and Wednesday, um, another fast moving trough comes through. You can see our surrounding areas to the north are entirely in the green, but we're uh, moderately dry through here, starting to dry out a bit across Nevada. And then as we go into Thursday, um, we're in a zonal flow with near seasonable to, to uh, slightly cooler than normal temperatures. So our uh, drying will be ra rather uh, gradual, especially with the longer nights uh, this time of year. Total seven-day precipitation accumulation, again, uh, heaviest up in Idaho, uh, minimal in our southern areas for a change. And our 8 to 14-day outlook, September 9th to the 15th, still a much cooler than normal signal across the northern Rockies into the northern portion of the Great Basin. But we start getting drier air with that coolness, so not too much more in the way of precipitation and nothing significant in terms of the monsoon. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.